Is it that you have to mm-hmm. l- tweak a lot of settings, like hyperparameters, to actually match the real world behavior, or is it easy, quote unquote? I mean, so it really depends on the situation, right? So we, we have some documentations in the neural PD JL library where, you know, a student kind of just said, here's a neural network I'm going to pick. When, when they trained it, it worked quite well, right? Um, when you get to some cases, in some cases, you look at it and you, you try your neural network and your loss function, you know, it, it, it stops at a certain point and you just go, okay, like this didn't approximate well. And, and there is some theory behind it, right? So um, there, there are two things. Uh, one theory is the universal approximation theorem, which says that a neural network, if it's sufficiently large, so if you have a, your, your weight matrices are sufficiently large enough, so your, your inner layers are you know, sufficiently large, um, then a neural network can approximate any function, mm-hmm. right? And, and you, can, you, you can write that down more rigorously, like as, oh, you know, if you have a function f of x and you have a neural network, then, you know, there, or there's a choice of a neural network such that um, its parameters give you like epsilon away for this any x, f, right? Um, so you, you can formalize this discussion a bit more, but essentially, you know, if your neural network is big enough, it'll, ma- it'll be able to approximate the function. And so the first thing you have to do is like, you know, if, if you try a neural network out, you, you get a loss in the end and then you kind of go, oh, um, that loss saturated before I thought it should, maybe try a larger neural network, right? Um, but then there's all the, the different choices of different architectures, like, yeah, should you use a different activation functions? There's really no theory that I know of on, you know, um, if you choose different activation functions and you'll get lower error in this case, or, you know, what, what properties to look at. So you do kind of have to do this, this, uh, this random walk of, you know, here's the different architectures I'm trying, here are the size of the neural networks, look at what, what you're getting as your solution and kind of move it around, right? So in, in that sense, it's a little bit different than what you might be traditionally used to with, you know, just like an ODE solver, there's a tolerance. And if the you're getting too much error, you lower the tolerance, right? So that's very straightforward. And then, and then you know, if you're using, you know, like a loop over like a fixed time step method, you know that if you decrease DT, you're going to decrease your error. In this set, in, in the sense that this is from neural networks, it kind of is true, right? You you kind of know that there's still this asymptotic limit. If you make your neural network big enough, it'll work. But um, you, you computationally can't do that, and it's kind of really much more difficult to figure out what that that level is. It's hard to it's hard to really guess what what a you know the first neural network you try, what what area you're going to be saturating at. Um, there's a second aspect to it too, right? Which is, you know, the thing that I kind of glossed over in, in the quick definition of a physicist informed neural network is really this idea that um, when you when you're evaluating this physics loss, right, you're evaluating at specific points in space. So, you know, when I say, oh, you need to take one derivative in t, two derivatives in x, you take the difference, and that tells you how bad, you know, how close the the neural network is to the solution of the PDE at this pair t x, right? Um, you can't check every single TX, so how do you actually sample over the space, right? And so you, you can actually prove that if you take more sample points and, you know, and, and they're all distance, uh, delta T, delta X apart, you send delta T, delta X to zero, you can prove that that your loss estimate over the whole space is converging to, you know, the integral of this PD. So, so you can prove that, you know, if you take enough sample points in your space, you are getting a pretty good view of how well you're solving the PD. Um, but this is another thing where it's like in practice, you know, um, how, did I take enough points in my loss function and did I, um, and did I pick a big enough neural network? Like which of these are my two problems right now? It, it, right now there's, there's not really a nice way to be able to automatically declare between the two. And it kind of takes a little bit of the physical knowledge looking at the solutions you get to kind of tweak it until you get something that, that starts to work out well.